guess the highlight is that I get to tell you a little bit about the great uh, work, the excellent work of the Middle East Institute. Uh, Ambassador Wendy uh, Chamberlain, a big thank you to you for inviting me and of course to your hardworking team. A please round of applause for them. Of course, times, uh, times, economic times are very hard right now, and it's very hard to recruit good people. Uh, a friend of mine decided that he'd had enough of the world of television broadcasting. And he said to me, he's a journalist, fellow journalist, he said, I'm going to join the FBI. So he went. He went for an interview to the FBI, and uh, the recruiting officer liked him. He knew him and, you know, said, you know, well, he's a journalist. I better ask him a couple of questions. So he said, look, what's two plus two? My friend said, four. He said, what's the square root of 100? He said... 10. He said, who shot JFK? My friend said, the recruiting officer said, listen, I'll tell you what, go home, think about it, and uh, we'll talk tomorrow. So that night I called him and I said, uh, how did your interview with the FBI go? Did you get the job? He said, hey, not only did I get the job, I'm already on a murder case. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you wonder about my profession, I guess. Now, of course, it's a very different story at the Middle East Institute, uh, I hope. <laughs> the MEI is uh, Washington's oldest non-profit, uh, non-partisan institute dedicated to promoting understanding of uh, the Middle East region. And nowadays, of course, that's, that's very difficult um, and very sensitive, of course. Um, I work with Al Jazeera, which normally in America has people screaming and running for the doors. Um, it's, I, I always say to people, it's very interesting that the word the has become the most dangerous word in the world. Just the word the. If you say it in Arabic, because it's Al. If you stick Al in front of anything, it becomes dangerous. You know, you have Al-Qaeda, Al-Aqsa, Al-Jazeera. But of course, you have uh, Al Gore. And, uh, <laughs> and you did start it. You did start it with Al Capone. So <laughs> it does go a little bit deeper than that. Now, uh, unlike the ups young upstarts of uh, today, I guess, like Al Jazeera, uh, the MEI was founded in 1946 by two men who were experts in the region, uh, former U.S. Secretary of State Christian Herter and his good friend George Camp Kaiser. Uh, it was originally under the wing of the Johns, Hop uh, John, uh, Johns Hopkins School for Advanced International Studies, but they took it out eventually and made it into a, an independent nonprofit organization. Now, it's gone on to earn a reputation as uh, an unbiased source of information and analysis on what is clearly one of the most important regions of the world. Um, I know that firsthand, of course, because I work in the news business, which uh, has so much of its, uh, uh, its work and its uh, stories generated from that area. There's still a lot of negative stereotyping, of course, and it's something we have to overcome. So in the current uh, mood of Islamophobia, the work of the MEI is more crucial than ever. And I think some of you may have heard me tell the story of how, you know, prejudice can exist. I tell the story of a teacher who had, uh, who had some very young students, six, seven-year-old students uh, in her school, in her class. And they came back after their afternoon recess. And the teacher said, well, now the, uh, the break is over. We're going to do some spelling. And she pointed to one young boy and she said, Michael, what did you do during the break? And he said, well, miss, I, I played in the, in the sandbox with Catherine. She said, well, very good, Michael. If you can spell sand correctly, you can have a cookie. So, you know, he very confidently said, S-A-N-D, miss. She goes, very good, Michael. You, you get a cookie. So, Catherine, you were playing in the sandbox with Michael. Yes, miss, we built sand castles and we were laughing. It was fun. Well, Catherine, if you can spell box correctly, and I, and I warn you, think about this. It's a little tricky. It's only a six, seven-year-old girl. Said, if you can spell box correctly, you can have a cookie. So, young Catherine's very nervous. She said, B-O-X, miss? Very good, Catherine, you get a cookie. Muhammad, did you play in the sandbox with Catherine and Michael? And Muhammad said, no, miss, I wanted to, but they called me names and they threw sand at me and they wouldn't let me play with them. And the teacher said, Muhammad, that's, that sounds to me like blatant racial discrimination. If you can spell blatant racial discrimination. <laughs> of course. I hope times have changed a lot since then. You know, it's difficult, though. As a journalist, I travel a lot. And, um, you know, I spend a lot of time, obviously, going through airport security. And I'm glad, uh, glad we have Secretary Lahoud with us because I heard that some of the, uh, the airlines in the U.S. were trying to, to improve their customer service in light of how difficult it is to go in and out of airports. And I heard that one of the airlines said, well, look, you know, if, if the pilot does a very bad landing, it's his responsibility to stand at the cockpit door and see the passengers off, you know, so that the crew doesn't get all the, 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 the abuse. So after one really bad landing uh, of this, this airline, you know, this uh, plane, the pilot stood at the cockpit door as all the people were getting off, and he was waiting for someone to say something, but they all sort of got off a little shaken up, you know, shaken up and everything, and he thought he got away with it. But the last passenger, sort of taking her time getting off, was an elderly lady. 
And as she came up to the pilot, she said, Sonny, can I ask you a question? He said, yes, ma'am. She said, did we land or were we shot down? <laughs> now, of course, education is the key. And, uh, and I think the MEI launched as part of its mission, you know, such a, an important program. It's got the Middle East Journal, the oldest and most prestigious uh, US uh, scholarly publication that covers the region. There's also a wealth of information at the George Camp Kaiser Library. And of course, hundreds of students get uh, tuition and education instruction every year in Arabic, Hebrew, Persian, and Turkish, along with the uh, adjunct scholars. I know many of you here are a part of that program, which brings together former diplomats, uh, government officials, academics, and uh, journalists into, you know, into this environment to help dispel some of the myths and the negativity. Now, of course, there's so much more uh, I could say, but there's never enough time. So that's some background on the, the great work of the MEI. And I'm going to leave you with words of wisdom. Now, I'm told this is a story that came out of Lebanon. You know, it's like a, almost like a farmer's proverb from the, uh, the mountains of Lebanon. It was a story, and thank goodness you've all eaten your dinner because this is pushing the envelope a bit. Um, story of this uh, young, this little sparrow that decided not to fly south for the winter. And this apparently is the story that these uh, Lebanese farmers in the mountains tell as a, as a sort of, you know, way to impart wisdom. So this little sparrow decided not to fly south for the winter when all the other birds were going. All the other birds were like, come on, come on, it's getting cold. And the sparrow was like, I'm okay, I'm okay. So anyway, time went on, and the sparrow found himself pretty much by himself in, the, in the, the increasingly cold weather, but was quite happy because, of course, there was no competition for food. So one day, this little sparrow hopped along on the branch to set off, and as he jumped off the branch, he plummeted to the ground. His wings had frozen because he'd left it too late. And he was like, oh, my goodness, I left it too late. You know, I'm, I'm going to die. And he's lying frozen on the ground, on this hard ground with the frost but as he was lying there contemplating death, this cow happened to be, you know, walking past, didn't see the sparrow, and as he was walking over the sparrow, he did a huge cow pat on the sparrow. So the sparrow's like, oh, I mean, that's even more undignified. I'm, I'm not only, I'm, I'm like frozen to death, but this cow has just like pooped on me, you know, and I'm going to die like this, I'm going to suffocate. But the warmth of the cow pat started to thaw the sparrow's wings. So the sparrow was like, I'm going to survive, and he started like loosening up his wings, and he was, he was so happy that he was going to survive, he started chirping. And as he was chirping away, this cat that happened to be walking through the field saw a chirping cow pat, thought, I've never seen one of these before. And he dug through the cow pat and, of course, found the sparrow, whom he killed very quickly. So I was told the moral of the story is that not everyone who poops on you is your enemy. Not everyone who digs you out of the poop is your friend. And if you're in the poop and happy, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> They're never going to invite me back again, I know. Now, listen, I, I, want, <laughs> I want to thank you very much uh, for coming and, and lending your support to the MEI this evening. Thank you very much. And, of course, you know, support the Middle East Institute. It's, it's spread the word of understanding so we can have a, a safer and, and more secure future. I leave you now again with Ambassador Wendy Chamberlain. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh... Riz Khan from Al Jazeera. Certainly um, fun to end on a light, light note and enjoy the rest of your meal. And we hope to see you all here in this room tomorrow starting at 8.45 for a terrific day of, uh, of, uh, of conference. Thank you.